Well, I grew up in the segregated South. I was just five years old when the Montgomery boys, bus boycott took place. A lot of tension, uh, bombings. A in that period, there was, it started with my family. I also had a great Sunday school teacher, uh, a thoughtful and compelling rabbi. And then beyond my small family or circle of, of, of thought leaders, in, in my hometown, uh, you had Reverend King, uh, who was pastor of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. When I uh, was very young, I think I could still stand up in the front seat of the car uh, next to my father's shoulder. I remember he took me to Dr. King's home, which was just a couple of blocks from his house, uh, a few nights after, from his office, a few nights after it had been bombed. So I still remember the the destruction on the front of that house. Uh, those were frightening memories of not, not only hate, uh, but at that time it was uh, state-sanctioned hate. States and cities so delayed uh, implementation of the desegregation of schools that my public school system was not integrated until 1967 when I was a senior in high school. My, my graduating class had seven to eight hundred students. There were eight or nine African American students. Uh, I, I think back and realize I had an entire uh, childhood uh, with people who had great economic diversity because there were only two high schools at the time, two high schools that were predominantly white, all white, and two African American high schools. But the socioeconomic spectrum went from uh, ac across uh, the continuum to, uh, and so I had those, those exposures and made those friendships that were very important to me. But I had no opportunity uh, to make a friend of an African American student, for instance. I was a member of a religious minority but there were only a large handful of us as well. And, and that certainly uh, shapes how you view the world too. This summer, I returned to Spain. I stood in a room in the Alhambra Palace where in 1492, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella commissioned Columbus. In that same room, just a few months later, they expelled all the Jews from Spain. So my family, along with millions of others, was dispersed around the Mediterranean and around the world. My family landed in the island of Rhodes off the coast of Turkey. So I, that's the first time I've returned to that country, I guess, and I felt like 500 years later my family steps back in that country. The experience of an expulsion, uh, even though it happened generations ago, and how a people embraced, they had a different language, they had different foods, they had a different religion, and through the generations it was preserved uh, until they immigrated to Montgomery, Alabama. So those experiences, uh, personally, then everything that went on around me with the civil rights uh, movement was profound. And I think I'm fortunate in the position that I'm in. A college campus is a beautiful place, and part of it is because of the mosaic of cultures and languages and religions and classes. Uh, be true to yourself. It's a cliche, but uh, it's the most important one. Uh, you, you can try to please everybody. Uh, you, you've got to find your values. Sometimes it's lonely uh, to make a, a decision, uh, but it's, if it's based upon uh, principles and values that you find comfortable, uh, then, then you have the courage to, to take a stand. So that, that, uh, it's that simple to me.